Welcome, chosen one. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Gwent video. Uh, like I said in my past couple of videos, there'll be no gameplay today. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about and discuss before the expansion Way of the Witcher. Woo! It's tomorrow. And I just, I gotta say. This is my favorite expansion so far. And uh, we've had some good ones. Like, I've, I've enjoyed most of the ones we've had. Um, I think my, my favorite up until now was Iron Judgment, just because they brought in armor. Which I think is such a crucial mechanic in Gwent. And the fact that we went... How, how long did we go? Almost a year? It must have been September, so almost a year. Without armor in the game. That was not good. That was not good. But Way of the Witcher is now definitely my favorite. And uh, in this video, I want to talk about just my initial thoughts. Uh, now that we have seen all the cards, we've gotten all the reveals. You know, I have some thoughts about the expansion as a whole. So this will this will be kind of like the review uh, that you get here on YouTube. I will do a full card by card review for the patrons. But for you, this will be like my general thoughts on the expansion as a whole. I will go over some of the more uh, interesting cards, in my opinion. And I will cover some of my initial plans. You know, the decks that I want to try first. Uh, I do think that th there's a lot of decks that we could build from these new cards. And there's a lot of existing archetypes and existing decks that can be supplemented and be changed. And, you know, we can get several varieties uh, based on some of these new cards. So... Like, the, the possibilities are probably not endless, but they go way beyond what I'm going to cover today. Um, I've been fairly, fairly narrow-minded. Like, I, I know some decks that, oh god, I'm going to play. And uh, I'll be talking about those, but also some decks that I know eventually I do want to try. Uh, if I can find, like, a good net deck to start off with, or if I get some inspiration and actually manage to, to make it myself. So... Without further ado, let's get into my, you know, initial thoughts and uh, <clears throat> general review of the Way of the Witcher expansion. Uh, just based on reveals, obviously we haven't gotten to try these cards yet. You know, but for me, it's not as much about how playable they end up being or how optimized uh, the, the cards will be for certain archetypes. It's about design and how interesting they are and how fun they look. So I, I think I think e even if I haven't tried the cards, I still think I have a good basis to review this expansion, uh, you know, based on you know my own criteria. Now on the screen before you, you can see Gorthrugvaid. I'm gonna struggle to pronounce some of these uh, new location cards. Now people have suspected locations would be the final legendaries, and they were correct. And they're brand new artifacts. And artifacts have been a very tricky card type for uh, for the Gwent team to sort out. And you know, we, we saw scenarios uh, last year, last December, with the Merchants of Ophir. And while the scenarios are definitely overtuned, uh, still, you know, they were designed with Bomb Heaver in mind, which is quite apparent. And they still saw play despite everyone playing Bomb Heaver. And now the Bomb Heaver is gone. Like it's 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 so clear that something still needs to be done. At least they're nerfing haunt by a provision, which is a step in the right direction. I'm glad they're taking baby steps because I don't want cards to become unplayable. I just want some cards to be less playable. But these new locations may be some of my favorite artifacts and some of my favorite designs from the entire expansion. And this expansion has some fantastic designs, and we'll get into that. But these locations, uh, some people are kind of upset that they're like it's very copy paste design across factions, and I can see that. But honestly, I'm glad each faction got a card like this because I'm really excited about this type of card. So they are eight provision. They're all eight provision legendary artifacts, one for each faction. Uh, they have resilience, which is new for artifacts, and their deploy effect is to spawn and play one of the new bronze units. So. For the four factions, they get Witchers. You know, they each got four Witcher units, uh, Bronzes. And you can spawn and play 
either one of those that you want. And for Syndicate, you'll be able to spawn one of the new mutants. And for monsters, you know, there's four monsters. And uh, that's all well and good. You know, that's just to make sure that uh, it's not a super low tempo play. You need something upon deploy to make artifacts playable. And also just, you know, the more of the artifacts points that actually comes from interactive units, the better. Like, like because most of the points from these locations come from just normal units that can be killed, that can be locked, or they can just straight up not do much. Uh, that, you know, removes the need for artifact removal, right? Like, like that's been such a, a point of contention in Gwent for so long. But with these locations... A majority of the points come in the form of units that can be interacted with. You know, if desired, if the opponent is playing, you know, damage-based cards, they'll still be able to get value. If they're playing removal, they will often have, you know, engines can come from this. You know, cards worth killing can definitely come from these locations. And that adds an interactive element. And then there's just this slight uninteractive element. Uh... And that's the order effect. They each have like a little tech order effect, which is where the resilience comes in. Because if you don't want to use the order, the round you play this, this will actually carry over into the next round, which I think is great. One of the main things I wanted for artifacts, I'm, I'm going to be talking about artifacts a lot. One of the main things that I want from them is for them to not be like Hengate Sword and uh, Land of a Thousand Fables, where the fact that they're artifacts doesn't matter because it's just deploy. But for these cards, the fact that they are artifacts as opposed to units or special cards, it makes such a huge difference because this allowed them to put resilience on an order effect without actually giving you a physical body with carryover. And that, that's such a clever way. And also like resilience, like this sticking around, it makes sense for a location. It's very thematic, very flavorful. And it's such a clever use of the, of the artifact card type because um, they are cards that sit on the board, but they're not units. They don't have power. And now with this, like, we can give resilience to order effects without them having to be units. Of course, like, they're, they're, there's going to be a strong limitation to how powerful these can be because they will be uninter uninteractive. The cheapest way to deal with this is Heat Wave. But this is an 8-provision card. Most of its points will be from a deploy effect. You're never going to heat wave this. Never in a million years. And unless they, they figure out artifact removal and a way to make cheaper versions of it, these locations will not be removed. And so the order effect has to be, you know, very low to the ground. And I think they did a pretty good job. Uh, they're, they're very, they're, they're like tech abilities that you, you have to work to get value from them, they usually just synergize with other cards in your deck instead of straight up being points on their own. I don't know why my nose is itching. It always itches when I need to talk. I think moving my mouth a lot puts my mustache hair up in my nose and it tickles. But yes, that, that's my, my general thoughts on these locations. Uh, this is a Nilfgaard one. It will move a unit from your opponent's graveyard to the top of their deck. So. You know, any amazing gold card they played in the previous rounds or that you've killed, you can move and then Cantarella in the same turn. This is the best way to set up Cantarella. You're limited to your opponent's graveyard. But I think that's fair. I think that's very fair for an order effect on a pretty much uninteractable card, uninteractive card, that can set up Cantarella the same turn you play her. Like, Cantarella is going to be really good with this. And that's exciting. You can also just put like a, a very bad card on top of your opponent's deck, which is also part of the new deck manipulation strategy. So I'm a big fan of this. Uh, here's Heron Kad Kadush. Kadush. Kadok. Kadok sounds more like a Skellige thing, I guess. Because it's the Skellige one. You know, it spawns or plays a Bear Witcher, any of the four bronzes. Order, heal adjacent units by three. So this one has, you know, potentially just straight up six points. But you need, 
adjacent units that are each damaged by at least three. Uh, the the Bear Witcher, you know, who would damage himself by three. And, you know, with Adrenaline will damage an enemy. He's a really good target. Now, the Bear Witcher Adapt heals itself. So, it's kind of wasted points. And uh, the other ones, they don't damage themselves. So, like, you're going to have to set this up with some damaged units. Bear Witcher synergize really well. Um, but, yeah. Like, the fact that it's heal. Like, like we've seen. You know, heal is a lot weaker than something like boost. So even though this can heal for potentially six, that is not, you, you don't look at this card and think, wow, this has six points on order as a carryover effect. You do not think that. Uh, even though it potentially could. Potentially it could. But uh, I think it's fine. I think it's perfectly fine. Heal is substantially weaker than something like boost or damage, you know, straight up points. Like, this is like a boost that requires setup, which is kind of weird. NR gets Care Saren, which spawns and plays a Griffin Witcher, and on order will boost a unit in your deck by three. So, this is the most, you know, straight up one. Just boost a unit in your deck by three. Um. I mean, there's not much to say about this. Like I'm, I'm not a fan of Northern Realms in this expansion. I think I don't, I don't like what they're going for because I don't feel like they're going for anything. I don't see much synergy between any of the Griffin Witchers. Uh, th I mean, they got some cool cards, like the the Arch Griffin itself, but, eh. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm not, I'm not too keen on this. On, on this faction and uh, you know as far as the the locations go it's probably the most basic one the most generic one too I mean it's it's great for uh, for for protecting your units before you tour them out and uh, you know with the new you know the the Witcher King the Witcher master for NR you know Erland of Larvik is that it Larvik who will, you know, drain all the boosts from your deck, like, you know, you can use this as, you know, carry over with him. Doesn't really matter that much, but, uh, you know, I can't say much about this because I'm just, I'm not too keen on this. Like, it's a location card, so I love it, but it's, like, my least favorite one. Dol du Lok. Monsters. Spawn and play one of the monsters. Now, Succubus, Fuka, Chimera, and Hybrid. I mean, Ch Chimera is pretty cool. Chimera can be pretty powerful. Uh, the other ones are falling a little bit behind. Uh, I think Hybrid is perfectly fine. Succubus will have some cool meme decks. Fuka is just bad. Although, I mean, having just a potential Thrive Engine available from this... Like, it's, it's a nice option to have. But uh, the order effect on this one is pretty nice. Move the highest power unit to the top of your deck and spawn a drone on both sides of this card. So you get two points. And you get to boo uh, move your biggest unit to the top of your deck. Now that works with Nagalfar, works with Imlarith. It also works really well with Decoy. Now, if you don't if you don't know quite how Decoy works, it shuffles a unit from your from your board into your deck. And what it means by this is that it, it takes your deck. And it takes the unit, and it doesn't actually shuffle your deck. Your deck stays the same, but the unit goes into a random position. It could go on top, it could go on bottom, in the middle, whatever. But if you do it on a doomed unit, you know, like one of the two drones you get when you activate this, because it's doomed, when it leaves the battlefield, it will be banished. So it's not going in your deck. And, you know, like I said, it says shuffle a unit into your deck, but it, the deck isn't shuffled. It's just the one unit, but there's no unit. So with this, like you get two drones, you move your biggest card to the top, you play decoy, and it's just, you know, six provisions, lose one point, play your biggest card. The fact that it actually provides you with drones makes me think that, that they had to think of decoy when they made this, because it's, I mean, I already think decoy is pretty legit in monsters, because they have Naglfar to put golds on top, and they have drones and, and Fruits of Isgith 
as as good decoy targets. So mm, they must have thought of it, and I love it. I'm I'm gonna play this with decoy. You know, you you can play with Imlorith. You know, you can play with whatever you want. I'm just playing it with decoy. All right, the the Salamandra hideout spawns and plays one of the uh, the mutants, and the mutants are pretty cool. I'm I'm a big fan of the mutants, but the order effect on this one: move a poison from an ally to another unit. So you you know you're doing your self poison thing, right? You're poisoning some of your units. You're having a good time, getting value from it, and then you know at some point you know you want to kill an enemy unit, so you play a poison, you poison them. And then you use this to take one of your self poisons and just, you know, put it over there. It's it's a dangerous effect to have on an uninteractable card. Why do I keep saying uninteractable? It's uninteractive. It's a dangerous effect, but you know, these don't have zeal, so the opponent will know that this is there. It will know that you have poison targets, and if they're really scared, like they can interact by killing. You know your poisoned units potentially which is not always going to be easy but it does offer up an interactive element and like you still have to use you know two poison cards to kill the opponent's unit it's just you know one will get a little bit of extra value because you poison one of your own units that hopefully get bonuses from it but uh, honestly I, I i think it's fair I don't think this is going to be broken in any way. I see people compare it to Morale. Morale is just a piece of shit. This is a really cool design. So, I'm a big fan of the locations. I think, was that all the locations? Yeah, that was all the locations. So, I was really hoping for locations. I was really hoping for a new type of artifacts. Uh, something that, you know, reinvented artifacts as a card type. And I think that did a great job. I love these designs. Uh, they go, you know, they fit very well with all the other amazing designs in the in the expansion. But yeah, CDPR, fantastic job on the locations. I hope we get more locations in the future. Like, it's locations. Anything can be a location. We can get Kaer Morhen. I know a lot of people wanted that. Or Morhen. I don't know if, if you pronounce the H. Is there even an H in there? I think so. You know, the, the Wolf Witcher School. I know of that one. Um... Yeah, we can get so many locations and, you know, just the concept of resilience on an order effect without having a body on it. It's, mm, it's so elegant design. I love it. Okay, but with that out of the way, now I'm just going to go quickly over some cards that I chose to pick out that would best represent uh, just uh, the, the decks and archetypes that I'm the most excited about trying out and uh, the ones that you'll probably be seeing first. And uh, first off is Cat Witcher. Movement Scoia'tael. Holy shit. It got so much amazing support. I think it's going to be quite the archetype. Like, honestly, if, if there's anything in this expansion beyond, you know, individual cards that I think will need a nerf, it may be this. It depends on how gimmicky and tricky it is to set up, but I, I think... This could actually be a bit overtuned, and uh, sh you know, need some nerf. But I hope it's just small nerfs because I really want this to be playable and remain playable because it's some of the coolest, some of the coolest concepts that I've seen in this game, and <laughs> I've played this game for a while. So obviously, Cat Witcher four for five, uh, one of the cards you can get from the location, the Scoia'tael location. At the end of your turn, move self to the other row and damage a random enemy on the opposite row by one. Very basic effect. You know, a four for five engine, one point per turn. But then, you know, the self movement synergizes with a lot of cards. And adrenaline in four, so whenever you have four or less cards left in your hand, it deals two damage instead. Now, the adrenaline four effect is really good. Really good. You know, but it is random enemy so it's not targeted and the opponent can play around this like if they if they row stack a little bit then this may miss out on some value every other turn and if they you know place all their shields and armor 
on one row it will you will lose value every other turn so you can play around it you can reduce its effect you can obviously kill it although with you know a dolbathana sentry on the board this will immediately move be buffed to five so uh but did i i skipped the the scoyatel location huh i, I do have it we'll get to it it moves three allied units on order. So, yeah, you know what it does. <laughs> but, yeah, this is... People look at this and they see power creep. I see that see that as well. But in a really good way. This is the power level I want five provision bronzes to be at. Because you can have such elaborate effects. If this is the power level these cards are going to be at, the effects can be so much more elaborate. Like, when... when when Homecoming first was released, when Gwent, you know, was officially launched in 2018. Like, the the cards were such low power levels, there were so few numbers to tinker with, and the effects were so boring. Like, Wolfpack, which still has its same ability, it's a 2 power deal 2 damage. In the very early days of Homecoming, that was played. That card was played as one of the better 4 provision cards. And the five provision cards were not much better. They were like one point better. But now we get stuff like this, which is so amazing. So, you know, I know that CDPR are trying to buff older cards uh, to keep up with the power creep. And as long as they keep on doing that and trying their best to do that, I support this power creep fully because it gives us so much cooler effects. And it just... It allows the game to be so much better. Uh, there it is. Okay, stick a castle. Move three ally units to the other row. And that's it. We don't need to talk more about artifacts. Alright, select a mutation. This is an interesting card. It's a alchemy. Six provisions. Draw a card with adrenaline of your choice. Then shuffle back a card from your hand to your deck. And you spawn a witcher student on each allied row. A Neuromancy is a card that a lot of people have issues with. Uh, I do as well. And I, I think... I think tutoring shouldn't be that... That uh, open. Like, play any card from your deck. I, I don't... Like, that, that's not fun. That's not interesting. I like cards that, that tutor... Or in this case, actually draw. Like, very specific cards. Like the new Geralt. Geralt Quinn. Which will tutor a Witcher. Like only a Witcher. And we have Whispering Hillock, which will tutor a Death Wish unit. And then we have this, which will draw you a card with adrenaline. Gives you four points of tempo, which is not much, but I mean for six provisions. Hand fixing, you know, draw like a Vesemir Mentor, because he's getting adrenaline. This is so much more what I want. Like, I like the consistency in Gwent. I like that you, you have access to your cards. You can issue... You can execute your game plan. And it's it's not about draw RNG. It's not about who top decks the best cards. It becomes more about skill. Knowing when to play your cards. How to play them. And, you know... How to also interact with your opponent. Keep them off their game. While you're trying to execute yours. Yours. And this is a lot closer to just that. Like, if you have cards with adrenaline in your deck, this is an option for you. This is not a card that you can, you know, you can you can get Heat Wave with it if that's the card you need. It's more specific than that. But like, if you have a game plan that revolves around adrenaline, especially if it if it's a game plan that, you know, you you want a lot of Witchers. You're playing Witcher Swarm. This gives you two Witchers. And draws you an adrenaline card, which often is a Witcher. So it's just a good card, and it's it's a good direction for uh, tutoring and uh, just consistency in general. Speaking of consistency, did you ever wish Burner Brand was an engine? <laughs> Snowdrop, a two for eight with zeal. Order, draw two cards, then shuffle two cards back to your deck. Whenever you draw a card, boost self by two. So it's not quite Burner Brand. It will boost itself 2-6 by its own effect. 
So it's just 6 for 8 that draws you 2 cards. But instead of discarding 2 cards and, you know, having thinned your deck by 2, it shuffles back cards. So it, it fixes your hand. And if you have a lot of cards that draw cards, like uh, Dandelion Poet, Mata, uh, it works with discard cards as well because they do draw. Uh, if you have a lot of stuff like that, this can actually be worth a lot of points as well. Because it will boost up by 2 every time you draw a card. And this is also, you know, more... You know, I like this. I like hand fixing. Because... Because, I don't know, like... It allows you to play, you know, decks that requires, you know... Very specific cards in specific rounds. And, you know, you can have more bricks in your deck, but you have a card like Snowdrop, which will help you alleviate that. So I like this card. I, I don't know how good it'll be. I, th I think it's... I think it's very playable. And I think, I think we will have decks that... Uh, that maybe just happens to have a couple of draw effects. And they'll just put this in because it's like, oh, sure, why not? You know, combo decks can benefit from this. Uh, it is a good card in this card. And, you know, it it, uh, it draws you two cards, fixes your hand, you know, lets you get the, those skirmishers. But it doesn't actually thin your deck, so it's not like you're over-thinning by including this with the rest of the discard stuff. So that's just good. I like it. And it's a, it's a very lovely picture. All right, Fallen Rayla. This doesn't uh, really go into the self-poison stuff, although that is also something I really want to play. And this will be in it. But uh, Tribute is one of my favorite mechanics in Syndicate, and I guess in the game as a whole. I love Tribute. Uh, I love it as a way to, you know, have... Allow players to sometimes pay a little bit extra for extra effects. And, uh, you know, this is a big engine for tribute decks. Whenever you pay tribute, boost self by that tribute's cost. Now, they, they have said, um, if you use Madame Luisa to reduce a tribute to zero, this will boost by zero. And if you're playing off the books and all your tributes are reduced by one... Uh, this will reflect, you know, the new cost, the reduced cost, uh, in terms of reduced boosts, reduced boosts. You know, but it's nice. It's a five for eleven, but uh, it profits three, and you can pay three coins to give it veil to make it a little bit more protected. It will also boost itself by its own tribute, I imagine. So you can, you know, pay tribute three. This is an eight for eleven with veil. And, uh, yeah, that, that's pretty solid. That's pretty solid. In off the books, the tribute only costs two. So you'll actually have leftover coin. But you'll only boost to seven, like I said. But she'll always be eight. But you, you can choose yourself how you want to spend three of those points. And that's very nice. It's a very cool card. A very nice top-end card for tribute decks. And uh, I look forward to playing Fallen Rayla. All right, V, 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 V. Siri Dash from Beta. Let's just call it that. An eight for 12, Insectoid, Deathwish, shuffle V back to your deck, then increase its base power by three. Now the fact that it shuffles back on Deathwish, you know, that makes it so you can't just consume it and then you can have like a, I don't know, let's see, 11, 14, 17, 20 point Osril. You know, you can't do that. You know, if you've triggered it four times, you, you don't you don't get a 20-point Osral target. Uh, if you lock it first and then do it, sure. If you get it to 20 and then it goes to the graveyard at the end of a round, then yes, because Deathwish doesn't trigger at the end of rounds. So there are ways that you can set this up for Osral, but of course, you have to keep killing it. You have to keep getting it out of your deck. Of course, the, the, the location works great with this. You know, once it becomes your biggest unit, you know, you put it on top. Excuse me. Put it on top. 
you put it on top and you uh, decoy your emleriths or whatever you want to uh, put it in your hand or play it. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this card. I, I like the effect. It's potentially really powerful. But you have to keep consuming it and you have to keep drawing it. So I mean, with, with a lot of tutors and a lot of consumes, this can get pretty big. Maybe we'll see some monsters hyper thin return. Because uh, they, they want it in the deck and then you just also double cross to get it out. <laughs> this is going to be insane. But uh, you can you can definitely play around it. Uh, both players can play around it. Like it's uh, it's going to be very interesting to see. It is a twelve provision card, and it requires a lot of a lot of help, a lot of support to be good. But holy shit, if it can't be good, Ooh. Arnagod, the the Skellige Witcher man. 7 for 10, Witcher. Deploy, gain 1 armor for every damaged unit. And as long as you have 4 or less cards left in your hand, when your opponent plays a unit, damage that unit by Arnagod's power, then damage Arnagod by that unit's power. Now, I'm sure most of you have, you know, understood this card by now, because there's been talk on Reddit, but people have, you know, helped each other out. It's not a duel. This, this is not a duel where he hits first. It's just straight up, they both hit each other. If your opponent plays a 10, that 10 will take 7 damage, but Arnagod will take 10 damage. And unless he has 4 or more armor, he will just die. If it had been a duel, it would have been too insane. It would have been extremely broken. The way it is now, I think it's good. I mean, it's, it's definitely good. But I think it may be fine. But the nice thing about Adrenaline, of course... If this ends up being OP, make it Adrenaline 3. Or make it 11 provisions. Like, Adrenaline is actually just another number that you can tweak. And I love that. It's it's such a great mechanic. I know it's maybe not super interesting. But just, like... Don't look at Adrenaline. Look at what Adrenaline allows the, the devs to do. Like, an effect like this... Before Adrenaline was in the game, it could not exist. There was there would be no way to limit it. It, it would be OP. But now they can limit it. And if, if it ends up being OP with Adrenaline 4, boom. Adrenaline 3. Boom, 11 provisions. Probably not boom 6 power. Because this guy really relies on his power to, to get points. So he's probably going to stay at 7. But uh, he still has 2 numbers that can be tweaked. Which I think is very good. Uh, good finisher for Queen's Guard and for you know just Bear Witchers. I'll be playing him in both. I'm very excited. Just get a row full of damaged Queen's Guard and then put down this guy with like ten armor. Mmm. Yes. That'd be nice. A finisher for Queen's Guard. Like, come on. Come on. So good. All right, Idaran of Ulibo. 6 for 8. Neutral Human Mage Mutant. The first time you spawn a unit each turn, spawn a 1 power copy of it on this row, then give it Doomed. I can see this. This singular card. Uh, be the basis of a new archetype within every faction. Like, every faction can put this card in the deck along with any cards that they have access to that spawn units. And you can have like spawn Skellige, spawn monsters. Because this is insane. It's not limited to bronzes. It's every turn. You know, it's, it's spawn and summon, so you don't get deploy effects. And it's a one power copy, so it can e easily be killed. But he keeps, he keeps doing it. And it works with Karanthir, it works with Bribery, and it will work with a lot of Assimilate stuff. I can't wait to play Tourney Shalmar with him. Uh, it works with Revenants, it works with Queen's Guard, although, you know, you can really flood. It works with Dareland Soldiers. Like, whenever you play a Dareland, it spawns a Dareland. And with this guy, it spawns another Dareland. So every Dareland is three Darelands. 
And that deck really wants a lot of Darylands, so I I can see it it Darren, Itaran, it, it's Itaran, Itaran. I can see him being played in uh, in Darylands foot soldiers. They're not foot soldiers anymore. They're just soldiers. Um, Colgrim. Is this the last card? No. Ooh. Colgrim was like probably the first card we got revealed. And I've been excited about him ever since. A uh, 1 for 9. Adrenaline in 2. At the end of your turn, boost self by the difference between number of cards in players' decks. This is one of those effects that before Adrenaline, we could not have this. We could never have this. But now, we can. Because it only works when you have 2 or less cards in your hand. And yes, you can use Mata and stuff to extend the round once you get to the Adrenaline. That's just a nice synergy. That's just a cool combo. Um, but yeah, I mean this works well with hyper thin, and with hyper thick, where you you thicken up your opponent's deck with bullshit, which is what I'll be trying to play first, I think. Or like a mixture of both, you know, thin my deck very efficiently with Vigo into into a hunting pack probably, maybe portal even though it's been changed. I will cover that in a separate video. Um, but yeah, just hyper thin stuff and then just use all sorts of different abilities to put shitty cards in my opponent's deck. That just sounds hilarious. And I hope it's viable because I really want to do it. And then, you know, just drop Colgrim for, uh, for big points. Big points. Uh, I'm excited about this. Uh, it can be, you know, tutored with, uh, Geralt Quen. To give it a shield towards the end of a round, it can be taken by the the new the mutations card that I talked about, which draws you an adrenaline card. Uh, if you need more consistency, but it, it's one strength, so you can marching orders it. Although you may have Fion in your deck, which is also one. But uh, that that is a common card in hyper thin, so it works out great with Colgrim. Uh, works in hyper thin Serenova decks, which are actually a thing. It's just good. It's just good. I love it. I'm a big fan. Is this the last card? Yes. Bear Witcher Quartermaster, the one I got to reveal. Of course, the sentimental value all over the place, but also, of course, Queen's Guard. Now, I briefly mentioned Queen's Guard with Arnagod. You know, he's a great finisher for Queen's Guard. And this is like the best enabler for Queen's Guard that we have in the game, uh, at least in terms of bronzes. Harold Houndsnout is like this every turn. Um, and, uh, you know, you can use, uh, what's he called? Sigvald can be used for Queen's Guard, but he also has an offensive capability if, if you're already, you know, set up with the Queen's Guard, which you may be now that we have Bear Witcher Quartermaster, which is just an amazing card. And it's also good in Witcher Swarm, which I also want to play. Bear Witcher Swarm sounds great to me. And, uh, yeah. There's not much more to say. I mean, it, it's Queen's Guard, but it now has this guy. And Arnagot, which is... <laughs> I can't wait. I'm hyped. But, yeah. That's, uh... Those are all my initial thoughts and ideas for the Way of the Witcher expansion. Like I said in the beginning, this is my favorite expansion so far. I'm very excited uh, to be trying out all these new cards, new decks. Hopefully nothing is too broken. Because um, that can really ruin the experience of uh, early expansion times. But at least the first couple of days should be fine. And uh, we'll try to have a lot of fun during those times. But yeah, expansion looks great. Uh, features several of my favorite designs in the game. The, the design, the card design has really been stepped up for this one. With the locations, with the new bronzes, you know, power crept but in a good way. And uh, some of the other goals are also quite insane. I'm, uh, I'm very satisfied. Of course, we, there are some cards. Like making a bomb. No. And I don't like Alzer. And uh, there's, there's some cards that are a little bit weak. But so many of them seem good. Seem fun. Great designs all around. Big fan. Big, big fan. 
But that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed hearing my my thoughts and ramblings by way of The Witcher. Uh, I also have a couple of more videos that I want to make today. Uh, we're gonna get patch notes, full patch notes today, and I want to talk about all the changes to existing cards. Uh, we we got revealed all of the ones that were interesting, but I'm gonna talk about them in that video, alongside you know just quickly going over power buffs or like power changes and provision changes. And I think I'm going to do like a quick video on the portal change. Because I see a lot of people really, really upset with it. Uh, but I like it. And, uh, you know, I want to do a video just to, to help people understand at least why I like it. And maybe they can, you know, start seeing it in, in a different light. I hope. Anyway, thanks again for watching this video. Uh, stay tuned for more. And, of course, tomorrow, Way of the Witcher drops... I'm planning on doing two decks. Two videos tomorrow featuring two different decks. Just to get us started off, you know, nice and uh, nice and quick. But uh, until then, have a good one. I hope to see you soon.